My name is Sean Willis, a physiotherapist at University Hospital London Health Sciences Centre. And today we're going to go over how to adjust and put on a CPM machine. This particular CPM machine is manufactured by Kinetech. Uh, so some of the instruction uh, in terms of the remote and the electronics will be specific to this unit. Uh, but for the most part, they're fairly generic to most CPM machines. The key components of the CPM machine are the remote, which will allow you to set the flexion and extension for the individual. Generally speaking, it's fairly straightforward in terms of setting the uh, amount of movement that you would like to happen. Uh, there are basically, for most uh, remotes, they have a flexion uh, limit, an extension limit. Generally, when you press that button, the limit will start to flash, and then you use the up or down keys to set the amount of range of motion that's desired by the surgeon uh, to be achieved by um, the machine. The same with extension. You can limit the amount of extension or increase the amount of extension uh, based on what the surgeon is as requested for that individual and as you can see on the remote itself you can see that there's a start and stop button so that the patient themselves can initiate or stop the device at any time depending on how things are going on um, or, or what's happening if they have to use the bathroom and that type of thing. Generally speaking the CPMs we most often see them here at university hospitals post manipulation uh, they're for a stiff total knee replacement, a stiff ACL, those types of things. We may see them on occasion for individuals who have had some type of knee surgery uh, that require an epidural to be uh, in situ and uh, as a result can't bend their knee on their own so they'll need some type of assistance. The, but generally speaking those are the most common reasons as to why we'd see the CPM. In terms of adjustment a couple of finer points that uh, just to see on the machine itself. There are generally three adjustments that, that need to be made. One, uh, the most distally, there's two adjustments or two knobs here that can be adjusted to allow for dorsiflexion and plantar flexion of the ankle for comfort. Next, more proximal, is the distance for the tibia to lengthen out the CPM machine. And then for the thigh itself is the most proximal component here, and that will allow the uh, CPM machine to be extended to, to accommodate uh, a longer leg. What you want to be aware of is when we go to set up the machine is that the you want the machine basically to be bending and extending at the knee joint itself. All right? if, it's, if the knee joint is too far up or too far or too low uh, you're going to have to readjust the length of it. So we want to make sure that it's in the appropriate spot so that we can be as accurate as possible in terms of how the machine itself is working and that type of thing. For application of the CPM, you want to make sure that we're looking at the patient's uh, length of their leg. These generally are uh, one size fits all, so we're going to be making sure that we try and adjust it in as best as we can to fit the patient's uh, length of their leg. With Carolyn's leg, her leg is fairly long, so we want to make sure that we kind of get a, a rough uh, estimate in terms of how much uh, we're going to have to adjust this uh, CPM. So what we'll do is we'll just adjust the, the most distal component first, and we'll lengthen it out to a certain degree there. Now once we start to lengthen it out, if you can see that there are three straps here already, if this was quite short we wouldn't need to have a, another strap, but because there's such a, a gap here now between the foot pedal and the, the last strap, we do want to add a, a fourth strap on here to make sure that we have adequate support for the patient's leg while they're in the CPM itself. So we add that in. And generally speaking, you don't have to adjust these. once the CPM has been set to be uh, to be used no further adjustment of the uh, straps for underneath the leg need to be done. Then what we have here is another strap and basically just is a cushion here just to keep uh, the leg comfortable on the CPM machine. What we'll do is we'll get Carolyn to slip her leg into the CPM machine and as I had mentioned when we're looking at adjusting the CPM machine we want to make sure that the uh, the machine itself basically bends where the knee would normally bend. So for her lower leg it looks like we've got the distance approximately correct. We'll just quickly adjust the foot pedal here. And then the last adjustment is usually looking at adjusting the thigh component of it. So to get an accurate read in terms of the length of the thigh, what we do is I do like to get the knee uh, bending, so starting up the machine, allowing it to run a little bit and getting it up to a certain amount of flexion to make sure that we've got the uh, CPM adjusted correctly. We won't put any straps in yet because we're not quite, read, quite ready to be going to that point. So at the moment the dials don't look too bad. They are 
approximately where that knee would bend. Heel is into the foot well there, which is good, and up against the foot pedal. And so far that actually looks pretty good here. I'm just going to lengthen it out just a tad bit more just on the thigh, just to get it up towards the knee just a little bit more, and we'll tighten the knobs there. I'm going to start the machine again just to run it out a little bit further just to make sure that when we reach our upper limit that it will be appropriate. And that looks to be fairly accurate with the amount of knee bend that it's reporting. So about 110 on the machine and that's definitely greater than 90 so that's good. So once we've got the machine set in terms of the correct length, we want to make sure that the patient stays within the machine itself. So we're using these straps to help lock the leg into place. So I usually have one around the shin, and we're looking at applying another one on the thigh. Again, to help lock the leg in place. There is a strap built onto the machine for the foot. To help lock that in. And again, depending on the individual's length, you may need a third strap in around the ankle area. Just to make sure that the leg stays where it needs to be while the machine is running. Finish the pause, and then it should start to go back into extension. Yep, yeah, and that looks good there. And then you can adjust the uh, the speed as well as the force required to get the knee moving, depending on uh, how the patient is doing with their range of motion while in the machine.